So, I'm working out a video for you about how this happened. Look what they did to this perfectly good street. So, now I'm distracted, making you this video first, asking a fellow road fan for help to test the street's safety. One fun tool I'd love to try on that road, and thankfully Peter has one. Tell me about your tool here. Hi, uh, this is my uh, Tesla Model 3. Both Rob and I are curious about how both the full self-driving stack, but also the regular autopilot stack might hold up against the lab lane. Isn't it trying to do the same thing? What's the difference? Full self-driving is, uh, is a continuation of autopilot. Uh, the, the original autopilot is basically a highway assist. It, mm -hmm. it keeps you in the lane, you can change lanes, take exits. Full self-driving allows the car to drive on regular city streets too. So this is our test bed. Our hypothesis, if a Tesla can safely drive itself down this street, it should be no problem for a human driver. You know, the nice thing with an electric car, you just get in and you got air conditioning already. <laughs> but first, a thank you to today's sponsor, you! So what do you do to uh, engage the different systems? You probably know this already. It's super common info on YouTube, but it's all new to me. Okay and that'll engage the autopilot, uh, but it only works when I'm actually driving. This is my first time riding in a Tesla, by the way. Yeah. Enjoy it. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready. Okay, let's go. I'm playing it cool, but inside, I'm terrified. It feels like I just got on a roller coaster. Do so you help it get started? And I turn it on. It's doing pretty good. Or maybe it's more like the Tesla is a new driver on a learner permit. That's perfect. Say something nice, boost the computer's self-esteem, so it won't crash. Do on the circle here. Let's see. Seems just, just, just fine. It's like riding with your 16-year-old little sister for the first time and realizing she's not that bad of a driver. I think. Well, I'm impressed. I was hoping this would be <laughs> hilarious. It's confident and did the job. <laughs> An impressive first run for a street that's seriously messed up. Do you want me to uh, go back on full self-driving again, or do you want to go down um, to the regular autopilot? But we'll, do, we'll, we'll do it regular autopilot going back. Remember, autopilot is for helping people on the freeway. But the engineers of the Tesla company allow owners to use autopilot anywhere. Peter keeps his hands nearby so he can quickly grab the wheel. And as you can see now, the visualizations are a little more basic compared to before because the this is currently using the regular autopilot. And then a scary beeping. A little more concerned and careful. Oh, this is fine stuff. That's my... Drone, wake drone. Up. yeah, that's not your car. My drone is out of battery and landing itself. Forget about Lad Lane, forget about Tesla. That's landing in the middle of the street, so that's fun. I'm now so distracted trying to save my flying video equipment, which I need for making the video. Land right there next to that cone. I better hurry and scoop it up. Poor drone. Before the next car comes by, or else, <laughs> that's gonna become some very expensive laughter. Yeah, it's literally oh, oh, oh. lost. I better, I better go deal with that. Okay, yep, yep. let's, let's go for it. Now that the drone is safe and sound back up in the sky, I have to admit something to you. The Tesla's doing too good of a job, and it's too boring. <laughs> it's trying to get it to allow me to turn it on. And every time I think there's some drama... It's not allowing me to turn it on yet. There we go. It ends up working just fine! I am experiencing science fiction in the real world. And already it feels routine. How fast do you think this thing, autopilot, could do it without messing up? I mean, without being super dangerous. Um, I would say probably speed limit, actually. Really? Yeah. This will be a pretty big challenge for the Tesla. Right now, the speed limit on this street, even with all of its wackiness, is 45 miles per hour. But honestly, I don't know that it makes all that much sense. There's a school at the end of the street, there's neighborhoods on both sides, and the road's only three quarters of a mile long, so speeding doesn't save you that much time. But let's try it anyway. So now it's set to 55 miles an hour max. Oh gosh. Over 40, uh, no, that's 45 limit. Well, that's certainly too fast for my camera drone. Uh, the drone is... <laughs> I almost lost it again. You want me to slow down? No, that's okay. I'm curious to see if the car can handle it. 
These new lane configurations make the street a workout, both for computers and humans trying to go 45 miles per hour. And that's right. kind of the entire point, which we'll talk about in the serious video out next. There, there's a bunch of us that hate on Tesla, and the truth is it's because we don't have one. <laughs> it's good I don't, because I have a problem. These autopilot and full self-driving systems actually work too well. <laughs> it's just so weird to be, a, to be riding in a car where you're not holding the steering wheel, and yet I feel perfectly safe. I've gotten used to it in three runs. I'm like, it's not weird anymore. <laughs> Especially on this weird road. <laughs> if millions of common fools like me own cars like these, it'd get pretty dangerous pretty fast. SAE International is this group of about 100,000 engineers who work to create consensus in what car makers do. Like how to calculate horsepower the same way, so the number is useful when you're comparing cars from two different brands or two different countries. SAE now also rates driverless car technology so you can compare one car maker to another. It's a scale from zero to five. A level zero car can slam on the brakes automatically when you don't notice stop traffic ahead. This is called automatic emergency braking, something the U.S. now requires on all new cars since September 2022. A level one car can move the steering wheel back and forth a little bit to help you stay centered in your lane, or it will adjust the cruise control to match the speed of the traffic in front of you. That's called automatic cruise control, something Mitsubishi first offered in Japan in the 1990s. The Lexus LS430 was the first car Americans could buy with ACC. Level 2 is basically the same as Level 1, except the car has both lane centering and adaptive cruise control, and you can run them both at the same time. Levels 0, 1, and 2 are Advanced Driver Assistance Systems, ADAS. The technology in the car is there to be your buddy, your helper. It's not there to drive for you. ADAS is not the same thing as driving automation, and full driving automation is Level 5. That's SAE's benchmark for a car that can drive itself everywhere and anywhere. So even if you're sitting in the driver's seat, the car is the driver. This would be the vehicle where you could take a nap, eat, watch a movie, do whatever you want, anytime you want. A level five vehicle would not even need a steering wheel. A level four car is basically the same thing, except now and again, the car might not be able to drive you. You know, in say bad weather. The car could check ahead of time and say, sorry, I can't even start this journey. You're going to have to drive. Where autonomy gets really messy is level three. These are cars that can safely drive themselves until suddenly they can't. You know, might chauffeur you through a traffic jam, but when the computer gets confused, it'll hand responsibility back to you. And this could be the worst of both worlds because you're counting on the car. Sometimes for hours and hours, it's doing just fine. You start getting distracted, maybe even doze off. Quick, take over. The car may be counting on you, but you might not be ready. At the time of this video, there's only one car maker with a system approved for level three driving. And that car maker is not Tesla. Their full self-driving in its current form is not a level five, four, or even three system. It's just level two. A system that the company markets as full self-driving is just ADAS. Not even automation, just a helper. And from what I experience on Lad Lane, man, is it a good helper. Yeah, that worked well, a lot better than I expected. Well, we've answered the question. Can the Tesla handle this messed up road striping? The answer is yes. That just fine. So they don't have to fix it then. We're <laughs> But the name kind of eggs fools like me into doing foolish things. <laughs> when you have the toy, it's really hard to restrain yourself from using it. Driver who appears to be sleeping. Local news here in Los Angeles show people falling asleep during their torturously long commutes. Reporters in the Bay Area met up with this guy who rides in the back seat everywhere he goes with no driver. California Highway Patrol keep impounding his Tesla, but He's got a lot of money, so he just buys another one. We might be at the beginning of a very big problem. I followed you for about two miles and you were sleeping. I know, I understand you have autopilot, but if something was to happen, you're not able to make that conscious decision. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, they surveyed 600 people that own level two cars. And Tesla owners, four out of 10 say, yeah, I treat the car as full self-driving. 
GM Super Cruise users, 5 out of 10 consider their cars to be fully self-driving. And maybe you can blame this one on the marketing too. Of course it's a hands-free system! How else am I supposed to clap? Coming up in the next video. I don't work for the city. Bro, what is it? We obsessed over the Tesla. Now let's obsess over the streets. This is not what we're trying to do. This is wrong. <laughs> How did Lad Lane get so messed up in the first place? And if we can get 80% of the people to start slowing down, we're winning. I talk with a couple of experts who say this street was messed up from the day it opened. And there's a good chance a road near you has the exact same problem. So thanks to you, we've got a good thing going here. Five companies reached out this month to say, hey, we have this awesome collaboration opportunity. Marketing speak for an in-video ad. And thanks to your donation, I could politely write them back and say, no thank you, 